Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. So this is Keys of the Kingdom. You will need... You will need Brook City in order to play it. Now, there's a lie here. It says exclusive expansion for Brook City. It's actually a lie. These characters actually work in Street Masters, which is kind of cool. Uh, and that's right here in the book. In addition, this expansion includes three rival alley cards in use in the Street Masters board game. So, exclusive? I think not. Uh, here's the rule book. Really, no, it's, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is it. The rest of it's advertisement. But it just tells you that you can use the, the cop cards uh, as starter cards. You're going to get some of these if you do that with it. Uh, let's take a look and see what you get. So these are the new cars. Mine are all painted up. Yours will not be. But these give you starting uh, cop cars that look a little bit more sporty. Hong Kong-ish is what they're going for if you're a fan of those Hong Kong uh, movies. Uh, you're going to get some new characters. Uh, here is your new cop that you're going to get. Now, once again, mine is all painted up. You can do whatever you want with yours. But she's got like a nightstick right there that she's using for defensive purposes. And this is uh, Along who is our villain in this escapade that we're going to have here. And his big fur coat and his couple of knives that are out. So very, very cool. And then you're going to get a bunch of minions. I like to call them minions here. Uh, your ladies uh, here. You know, very beautiful and uh, very striking. So th these are really, really neat little miniatures. And you can see you get a whole bunch of them. Now, the rest of this is going to be cards that you're going to get in here. Uh, you're going to have a case. I'm not going to go through this too much. What's going to be interesting about this case is uh, you're going to be trying to find these clues. So you're going to have these clues that will come out. When the game starts, each person will have a clue assigned to them. There's no spoilers here. Uh, and you need to go to the lead and encounter this. Which some of these are pretty strong, like five per player. So in a two-player game, you need 10. You know, a four-player game, you need 20. What's going to happen is when you go to the lead and encounter it, and then the lead is going to move. So you're going to be running all over the board trying to track these down. When you get one and you accomplish it, the clue comes out on the board. It's going to come out active, and that's going to be important. Then this will go away, and you will get a new one. But this clue will be out on the board active. Okay? I'll come back to that. So the rest of these clues that you're going to see here, once again, not, not a lot of spoilers, they're going to do things. Like, so in order to take that active clue... And make it inactive, you gotta give up hunches, one hunch per player. Not every player has to give it up, you just have to give up that many. So you're playing a three player game, you have to give up three hunches, and that will make it inactive. And you're gonna win if you get all the clues on the board and they're inactive. So, what you gotta do is get the clue on the board, then make it inactive. But what's gonna make this tricky is you're gonna have things that are gonna come out, these clue cards that will come out each round, and some of these will be like, just flip over a clue that's inactive to the active side. Oof. So frustrating because what you're doing is you're building this up and then these case cards are going to be undoing them. So it's a little frustrating. So you'll figure this out quickly. I'm not spoiling anything, but what you're going to want to do is get these clues out, leave them active, even though some of these cards will likely trigger negative things if they're active. You know, it's up to you. And then spend the last part of the game making these inactive. That's what I found to be the best. Otherwise, you know, you're going to spend all these hunches to inactivate the clues and then a random card's going to come up and activate it again. Also, what you're going to get is you're going to get an ally and a rival card for each of these. My understanding these can be used in Street Master, as you can see here. And the rivals uh, will make the game harder and the allies if you want to make the game easier. So you can add those in as you see fit. We're also going to get four new cars. Uh, these can be your starter cars if you want to, or just put them in the vehicle deck. Uh, when driving a vehicle, you may move diagonally now, and you can exhaust it to move once. So that's kind of what you're doing, and anybody can commandeer those. Next, we're going to see our bad guy. So we have high stakes. Uh, we have uh, Ah Long, who's going to be our suspect. And the way he's going to work is uh, there's going to be a lot of these cards, these criminal cards in here that will have you rolling the dice. And if you get a critical hit, you're going to put an asset on him. And sometimes you just put an asset because there's enough influence on here, which will put assets on him. And what you're going to do with the assets that are put on him, and it can be a maximum of five. If one has to be added that's that over five, then you would just take stress, is he's going to roll the die. And on a critical hit, he's going to put influence on him. So if you have four assets and you roll four critical hits, you're putting four influence on him very quickly. And it's probably rare that that would happen, but it's possible, sure. Uh, if you get seven influence, you lose. So you're going to be getting these assets and rolling the dice all the time. And there's going to be a lot of dice rolling in here. And then you're going to do something negative on a critical hit. So one out of six chance for each die. 
But it's going to leave it up a little bit randomized. You know, you could be really bad, really poor based on those rules, which should uh, function out based on probability over time. But very luck-based, very different type of villain that you're having. He uh, could be the mastermind if you get a lot of critical hits, but he could be a bumbling idiot if you don't. So that's kind of where you stand with him. Next, we're going to take our hero, Young Hu Wong, and hopefully I pronounced that correctly. She has a 10 stress here, so she can eat up 10, which is fairly normal. It's kind of average, if you would. But she's going to have to choose a cop. That cop may draw a card and play an encounter card right there. Her action does not do any encounters. And to me, that makes her a support character from the start. So she's going to be what I would call a support character. But very good if you have a lot of people because she can help people, especially if somebody has a very powerful encounter card. Now, her cards to me, I didn't find her to be a very powerful character. Maybe I don't like playing support characters. Each cop may draw a card and resolve a prepared effect. That can be pretty good. Now, I like anything like this. Hot on the trail. I like this. So you can discard a card to move five and gain a hunch. Very good card. But, you know, each cop can do that, which could be great if you need to get around the boards. Once again, very good support character. But she's got a lot of these discard cards. And that can limit what you can do, that what you have in your hand, and what you can do in future turns, which limits your decision-making and your fun. Each time one of your cards causes a cop to discard a card, the cop gains a hunch. This is one to get out quickly. This is a good one to trial and error. Get this out quickly because a lot of our cards are going to make people discard cards, at least when they're discarding they're getting a hunch. Encounter two, then choose a cop to draw a card. Each And I like this one a lot too. Each cop with a crime in their care area gets a hunch and then encounter two. That was a really helpful one. Um, we've seen this one before and tipped off we've seen and I, this is one I got out early too. pushing limits before each cops encounter the cop may discard a card to gain another die once again we're discarding cards which will work really good with the one that gives you a hunch and choose an encounter card in your discard pile and draw in your hand this is really good with her power because she's going to let you play an encounter card so you're always going to want encounter cards in your hand with her so getting this out being able to choose one always at least gives you something to play with her action which is nice um there was another one in here I like to go eat. Uh, so I said that one, did that one. Uh, hot on the wheel. Okay, so all points engage. Encounter two, then choose a cop to discard one card and move two and place a progress on a, a crime. This is one I was, I was finding myself playing all the time because you can just automatically put a progress on something. And when it comes to these, uh, especially there, there was a one here that says if you have more than three influence on it uh, and you're rolling the dice constantly, some of these... Um, you know, you just have to have one influence and you trigger an asset. So it's nice to just put a progress on it. And I was able to slowly uh, accomplish some of those crimes just by putting that out and having multiple of those cards. It's an encounter card. So with her power, I could keep drawing it. And that worked out well for me. I like that card quite a bit. So what do I think about Keys of the Kingdom for the Brook City? I found this to be probably the second best expansion in, in a box like this. I probably liked uh, seventh, or six Cycle a lot better. That's my favorite by far. Uh, the Velocity, you know, it was okay. It was kind of hard to get into. The Busting, it, it played very differently. This plays more traditionally. Now, if you're looking for an easier villain, I think Along can be it with some bad dice rolls. And I think the case was a little frustrating. So I did like the villain. She's a good support character, but not one of my favorites. And the case, but that, that might be more of a comment on Velocity than this. Now, this one, this one has a little bit of strategy as you figure it out. I think it becomes more fun to play. At first, you'll be very, very frustrated. You're trying to figure it out. But I think that's what you're trying to do with the Syndicate. The Syndicate's like, wow, you're ramming your head up against the wall a lot. Then you kind of figure out what you're supposed to do. And things kind of fall into place for you. So, I squarely put this in the second one. I liked Keys of the Kingdom. It's what I excited to go back to. And the more, more I went back, the better that I got at it. And I like that aspect of it very well. She's somebody, you know, if I'm playing a three or four player game, I'd probably have people choose every single time. If you're playing one or two, I don't know that I would use her as often. So the more players, I think the better it is because you need a more of a support character than just heavy hitters all of the time. Uh, the minions were interesting. They work really well with the villain. And the case was a little frustrating because you're constantly undoing what you do. And I don't like that very much. That's not an aspect of gaming that I like. If I do something, I don't like, ah, oh, they're undoing. I got to do it again. So Keeper for me, like this one. Uh, this is a very strong addition, and it plays a little bit differently with some familiar tropes. The more you like the Hong Kong-themed uh, 80s movies or 90 cop shows, movies based in Hong Kong, the more you're going to like this. I would have liked some Rush Hour stuff because it's probably my favorite of the group. Um, that would have been really neat to have the cops from uh, Rush Hour parodies of them in this game. Eh, a missed opportunity if you ask me, but otherwise, solid addition. Liked it very much.